SCP-3199, or Humans Refuted, are a sentient humanoid species of a currently unknown biological origin. Though tissue samples suggest traces of domestic chicken and chimpanzee DNA. Instances of SCP-3199 are hairless, stained with a layer of albumin, and stand at an average of 2.9 meters. Weight averages 780 kilograms for a matured instance and 360 kilograms for a hatchling. The necks of SCP-3199 appear to be dislocated. They are capable of twisting approximately 340 degrees. This is presumably due to the nature of SCP-3199's reproductive cycle. SCP-3199 are opportunistic hunters, engaging with live subjects within a radius of 0.6 kilometers surrounding hatchlings that have not yet reached full adolescence. Average speed is recorded at 25 km an hour, and upon contact with human or animal subjects, SCP-3199 will proceed to <laughs> liquefying internal organs and bone structure. The cadaver is then transported to the young and utilized as a form of nourishment. Instances of SCP-3199 have been observed producing large eggs of an off-white coloration and rubbery appearance. These eggs pass through the entity's stomach, esophagus, and eventually out via the mouth, followed by a viscous red substance, which was first thought to be a form of placenta, though the chemical breakdown has determined it to be a highly corrosive material. SCP-3199 shows extreme distress throughout this process, with personnel describing the sound as not dissimilar to a scream. Presumably due to a biologically ingrained method of avoiding extinction, SCP-3199 produces its eggs to fill available space. This anomalous property currently has no known limit and, as a result, may pose an LK-class species transmutation scenario. Termination of SCP-3199 can be performed with relative ease. However, a complete eradication is currently difficult, as all instances of SCP-3199, regardless of age, carry one egg inside their stomach, ensuring survival for at least one member of their species at all times. Egg samples have proven to be extremely resilient, lacking visible signs of damage even after subjection to extreme blunt force trauma, extensive pressures exceeding 180,000 psi, high precision blades, and long-term acidic exposure. Use of point-blank explosives was suggested, but never tested. This is because heat exposure has been determined to accelerate hatch rates, and thus, detonation may run the risk of a containment breach. SCP-3199 was issued a Keter classification on 10th of the 6th, 2017. Following the events of a containment breach, SCP-3199's original water containment method was disassembled and replaced with the current resin solution. Special containment procedures for Keter class SCP-3199. All live instances of SCP-3199 are to be contained on Site-114, within a Keter humanoid containment chamber, and the walls of which should be coated in approximately 2 cm thick, acid-resistant steel. 2 meters of empty space are to be allocated between this chamber and secondary containment. Secondary containment consists of suspending all live instances of SCP-3199 inside a solid block of strong, transparent substance, which is currently a clear acrylic resin. This block is to be at a height of at least 3 meters, with one armed security guard stationed directly outside initial containment at all times. An 8-digit passcode can be obtained from the current Site-114's director in order to access the initial containment chamber, and allow for close-up examination of SCP-3199's behavior and appearance. CCTV equipment is, however, installed in one corner of the containment cell for remote observation. 
Secondary containment is to be regularly examined for damages, and any sign of aggressive activity will be noted. The current Site 114 director will then be informed at the earliest possible convenience. A temporary recall procedure is detailed in Addendum 319903, and experiments involving the use of live SCP-3199 instances are strictly prohibited without approval from at least two personnel of Level 4 security clearance or above. As of 12th of the 6th, 2017, there are four present and contained instances of SCP-3199. Addendum 3199-01 On the 2017-05 dispatched the following notice regarding SCP-3199. All experiments involving SCP-3199 examples are strictly prohibited until further notice. Hatching periods have proven too unreliable to warrant extensive research, and as the consequences of a containment breach become more and more apparent, the O5 Council have collectively decided to eliminate risks at the source and prevent testing until new information surfaces. We thank you for your cooperation. SCP-3199 was discovered in Ireland after reports of an unidentified bold creature crying like a banshee from within a dense woodlands resulted in the dispatching of MTF Omega-19. Two personnel were lost in action, their internal organs and jaws having been almost entirely dissolved. During transportation, SCP-3199 produced two offspring, resulting in the deaths of a further six personnel. Addendum 3199-02 On the f 2017, a thorough sweep of SCP-3199's initial recovery location was performed in an attempt to uncover any further information regarding their origin. Locals claimed that the small remote residence in question has been established in the woods for several years. Surface Team D029 recovered several items of interest, including one bag of assorted thread and needles of various colours and sizes, approximately 13 chicken carcasses based on the collective halves and quarters, with precise incisions located on the underbelly, neck and thigh. Six of the carcasses had been plucked with visible human teeth marks lining the bare areas seemingly at random. Several containers, including water bottles and Tupperware boxes, holding an unidentified watery paste. The paste is deep brown in colour and in the presence of oxygen becomes viscous and hard. Substance is currently awaiting chemical breakdown. An A5 notebook could brand and heavily scratched with what was determined to be human fingernails. The words open when we are pure are written on the front. Two chicken feather quills. The notebook itself consisted of 24 pages of standard lined paper, written in non-anomalous black ink. 19 of these pages consisted of various cuboid patterns and crude, childlike illustrations vaguely resembling SCP-3199. On the remaining five pages, large lines of writing detail the diary of an unnamed individual. Most of what was written was found totally illegible. However, one extract in particular, dated f the 6th, 1973, was written with notably higher clarity. If you are reading this, then lucky you. One millionth hour from not, and it'll be fun, fun, and the wonderful versatility of inferior human DNA will give birth to a new era. A stronger era. One where, and food and water will be nothing but things of the past, and we make and make and make more for the better future. I really haven't much time. That's why I envy you so. You'll have all the time you need. Time will be a... Time will be on and on and death will be life. New life changes lives and brings smiles like a freshness. New life will be a part of life from now on. The final page consisted of several ink blots, 13 instances of the word life in various sizes and two instances of the words didn't you want this. Addendum 3199-03, Protocol 34-22-B, Poached. Regarding the recontainment of SCP-3199, the following procedure will occur in the event of a breach. 
On-site personnel with level 1 security clearance or above assumed standard lockdown procedure and immediately moved to site 113 unless instructed otherwise. Site 114 is to be filled entirely with distilled water treated with class A sedatives. Surface Team Tango 306-A will be notified and dispatched and instructed to retrieve any instances of SCP-3199's eggs. Any living instances of SCP-3199 will be terminated on site and their remaining eggs will be collected. All egg samples are to be transported to temporary off-site containment and Site 114 will then be drained and janitorial staff dispatched to thoroughly clean the area. Personnel attempting to breach Site 114 before this inspection is complete will be apprehended and suspended accordingly. Please note, some personnel have displayed scepticism regarding the necessity of SCP-3199's current breach protocol. To elaborate, we have reason to believe that fluid is an excellent counter to SCP-3199's anomalous reproductive properties. It appears to enter an inert state in the presence of liquid, regardless of thickness or clarity. There are two theories regarding this occurrence. 1. SCP-3199's need for survival demands all of its attention to focus on not drowning. It's possible we have found a loophole within its own nature. And number 2. SCP-3199 considers the liquid around it as full space, and as a result does not produce any young when submerged. The latter theory holds more water, as SCP-3199 appears to be totally inactive when submerged. For now, I believe I speak for all of Site 114 when I say it's a relief to at least have a consistent method of containment. Dr. Watt, 12th of the 5th, 2017. <laughs> Video log transcript interview 3199 01. Interviewer Dr. Ewing interviewed Corporal Duncan, leading captain of MTF Omega 19, first to capture and detain SCP. 3199 during initial recovery. Forward, subject had undergone extensive psychiatric therapy prior to interview, and whilst not considered responsible for the deaths of Private McLeod and Lieutenant Corporal Langley, admitted to having not performed the necessary precautions. Begin log. Corporal Duncan, take a seat, right? Dr. Ewing, please, if you would. Corporal Duncan then clears his throat and white noise as he sits, visibly anxious. Corporal Duncan, the job was pretty simple, no auditory or visual triggers that the eggheads in Site 114 knew about. Seems to me as if they'd done a pretty top job at scraping the area clean. Corporal Duncan then laughs nervously. Never is that easy though, huh, ma'am? We landed around 2100 hours. The boys and I had been told that if we couldn't catch the thing, the best thing would be snapping a frame or two. So they, uh, they hooked us up with the best in night vision hardware. I know you have pictures, Ella. I know you've got something. The papers then shuffle, and Dr. Ewing looks grave. Dr. Ewing, you're under no obligation to view the recording. Nah, nah, I, I know that. Just shook me a little. Please go on. Corporal Duncan then shivering. We found something within the hour. Almost like a shack. Totally out of scrap metal and wood. Looked more like an oversized chicken coop than anything else. But I don't know that your new monster built it. Just made it a home. Dr. Ewing, and I assume you entered as soon as possible? Of course. It was a late shift, wanted this over as quick as possible. I'd like to say that's why I did what I did, but uh, I can't bring myself to make excuses. Corporal Duncan is then seen placing his head in his hand, sighing. I really, really f mom. Part of my French. Dr. Ewing, it's perfectly appropriate, all things considered. However, I'm going to have to ask you to continue explaining the procedure. Corporal Duncan then continues. Right, right, well, I had two of my men stationed at back. Private McLeod and Corporal Langley insisted they take first charge. Fresh out of training they were. Kids, I should be used to it by now, but... Corporal Duncan then laughs dryly. Never seen a smile get cut down so quick. It knew we were there. Somehow, jumped right at Private McLeod and... <laughs> the f***ing teeth out of his head. I see it whenever I blink, man. That's the shit that stays with you. Dr. Ewing then stated, I assure you, the Foundation will take every measure to ensure financial comfort for the families of your lost men, but could you elaborate on the other casualty? There was silence for a moment during this log, and Corporal Duncan leans back in his chair, pauses. Duncan, please, I have to urge you to continue. The more we know, the more we can do to stop it from happening again. 
Corporal Duncan clears his throat and continues. We barely had time to react before it started necking it down the corridor to the right. I guess the adrenaline had just about hit me because I fired off enough rounds to blow a chunk out of its chest just as its ugly head was about to hit a corner. I saw. Corporal Duncan pauses and shows visible signs of distress. I saw a straight f***ing moonlight on the other side. Bullseye! Thing let out the most awful scream. And I have a beautiful little baby boy at home, Doc. Did you know that? Irrelevant discussion of domestic life isn't necessary for this procedure. Lance Corporal Duncan, could you please? Dr. Ewing corrects. Corporal Duncan, I have a beautiful baby boy who just loves wailing when he's too cranky to sleep. And you know what? Every time he does, I think about that scream. See it popping into my head. Think what it did, and his pa gives him a look as if he's gonna bash his f***ing head against the wall. Corporal Duncan, now standing, gradually sits back down. Corporal Duncan, strained. They were good men. Please, kill that monster. If for no one else, for me. Note on transcript log. I wish the very best to the families of these lost during SCP 3199's initial recovery. Furthermore, I would like to formally request that Corporal Duncan is administered one Class B amnestic at the earliest possible convenience. No excuses. Dr. E. Ewing, Site 114, Director. Addendum 3199 04 Experiment Logs. Experiment 3199 A Intense Heat Exposure. Subject. One egg sample from SCP-3199. Method, subject relocated to a secure containment cell. Inside temperature of the cell was gradually increased at an average rate of seven degrees per minute. Results, after approximately nine minutes, the egg ruptured violently and produced a single hatchling. On-site personnel reacted swiftly to recontain the newborn instance. However, the excessive internal temperature impacted the physical growth of the young instance and it reached adolescence at an accelerated rate of 40 seconds. As a result, the now adolescent hatchling produced two further instances of SCP-3199. On-site security response was swift and all three instances were detained. All future heat testing involving SCP-3199 egg samples has been forbidden until further notice. Experiment 3199-B Liquid Nitrogen Bath Subject, one egg sample. The method, subject submerged entirely in liquid nitrogen. Security remain on standby throughout the procedure after concerns regarding another unexpected outbreak. After approximately 45 minutes of exposure, SCP-3199 had reached minus 190 degrees. Following two hours of exposure, the egg sample was removed and placed under extreme pressure. Results? Hydraulic pressure peaked at pressures of around 9,000 psi. Cracks appeared 30 minutes into exposure before the sample shattered. Egg samples were collected and furthermore pressed into a fine pulp. Zero traces of albumin or yolk were located. Incineration of these remains proved successful at destroying the egg in its entirety. Postscript, as Dr. Ewing once put so eloquently, let us not allow these small victories to distract from the larger picture. And whilst you may find the time to celebrate this discovery, we will not excuse apathy toward the entity itself. Dr. Watt. Experiment 3199-C, Chemical Analysis of Shell. Sample, 10 grams of finely pressed eggshell pulp taken from an SCP-3199 egg. Detailed chemical breakdown shows traces of NACA, enamel, and a currently unidentified carbon compound. Microscope analysis suggests that the shell itself is composed of tightly packed, organized crystals. Practical use of this material is currently undergoing consideration. And that is enough for today's lesson. In terms of SCP-3199, it is my firm belief that this was a human attempting a form of phoenix. Rising from the ashes, each egg produced is essentially a rebirth of itself. And as per the notes found on site, this would corroborate with that mild theory. But what are your theories on SCP-3199? Please do leave them down below in the comment section. Until the next lesson, I've been Mr. H.